They mock us, taunt us, and hate us. In a world filled with evil, it's easy to feel disheartened when faced with cruelty and malice. But remember, dear Christian, you are not alone in your struggle. In the midst of turmoil, there is a guiding light, a source of unwavering strength. God, our protector and refuge. As scripture says in Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When mocked, it is easy to retaliate with anger and resentment. But remember, in Romans 12, 21, we are urged, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let your actions be a testament to the transformative power of Christ Jesus. When you feel the sting of mockery and the weight of persecution, remember the words of Jesus in John 16, 33. In this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Our Lord faced ridicule, scorn, and ultimately the cross. Yet he emerged victorious over sin and death. As followers of Christ, we are called to take up our cross and follow him, even when the road ahead seems daunting. For it is in our weakness that his strength is made perfect, and in our suffering that his glory is revealed. Scripture assures us in 1 Peter 4, 14 to 16, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. Seek strength and comfort in prayer, knowing that God hears the cries of his children and is faithful to answer. But why is it that the world hates us followers of Christ so much? Why do they detest the truth and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? As John 15, 18 to 19 says, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember that those who mock and revile you do not know what they are doing. They are operating under the power of the evil one. Satan, the father of lies, has fooled them into thinking Christ and those who follow him are the enemy. It is a spiritual case of Stockholm Syndrome. In times of trouble and persecution, it's natural to feel disheartened by the words and actions of those who oppose our faith. But let me remind you of the unshakable truth found in Romans 8:31. If God is for us, who can be against us? Remembering that you are not the first and certainly will not be the last to endure persecution, let us look at examples from the Bible of those who were persecuted for the sake of our Lord Jesus. Stephen. In Acts 7, we learn about Stephen. He was known for his wisdom and was appointed to handle administrative duties in the early church. However, he faced severe opposition from some Jewish religious leaders. They accused him of blasphemy against God. Despite his defense, Stephen was dragged out of the city and stoned to death, becoming the first Christian martyr. Paul, before his conversion, Paul zealously persecuted Christians, consenting to their imprisonment and even their execution. However, after his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul underwent a dramatic conversion and became one of the most influential figures in early Christianity. He faced persecution numerous times, enduring beatings, imprisonment, and various other forms of opposition for spreading the Christian faith, ultimately ending in his execution. Peter and John The apostles Peter and John faced persecution from the religious authorities in Jerusalem for preaching about Jesus. They were arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin, where they were threatened and ordered to stop speaking about Jesus. Despite the threats, Peter and John continued to proclaim the gospel, leading to further opposition and persecution. These are just a few examples of persecution recorded in the Bible. You can find comfort in the fact that you are certainly not alone in being hated for your faith. Before we conclude, let me leave you with this last encouraging passage from God's Word. Matthew 5, 11, 12 says, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, stand firm in your faith knowing that you are not alone in your struggles. Rejoice in any persecution you may endure, and may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If you are struggling at all, whether it be because of the harshness of others or any other issues you may be facing, leave a message down in the comments so that I may pray for you and help you bear that burden. If you made it this far in the video and enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. God bless you, my friend.